another happiness interventions we did had to do with kindness. We asked people to do acts of kindness. Now, I think in most or all cultures, there's sort of this notion that being a generous, good person um, is, is good, <laughs> that it, it makes you happy. And I have a, a famous Chinese proverb here, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. <laughs> if you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a month, get married. <laughs> and obviously, they, have not, they had not read that study uh, that showed that it's actually two years that uh, marriage gives you happiness for. Um, if you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. And if you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody else. Now, notice the wisdom of this Chinese proverb. The first two things are just momentary pleasures. You know, fishing, taking a nap. Obviously, that's not going to make you happy forever. Getting married and inheriting a fortune are major circumstantial changes in life. But even those things people tend to adapt to over time. You know, you sort of adapt to, you get used to a new level of of happiness or a new level of wealth, um, and then you sort of just want more. You know, that's, that's, that's part of human nature, and it's, it's actually an important part of human nature that's adaptive. But then the last, the, the last uh, item, helping someone else, that's an activity that you can vary, that you can get lots of sort of, lots of good stuff can accrue from helping. And in fact, uh, oh, I love I loved this quote from our former president <laughs> who agrees with the Chinese about the benefits of helping. So when you're kind and generous to others, you see yourself as a generous person. So it's good for your self-perception. Um, it, it, it helps you see yourself as kind of a interconnected to others. It, help, it makes you interpret other people's behavior more charitably. Um, it relieves distress or, or discomfort over other people's misfortune. And I think maybe the biggest, the biggest factor in helping um, are the social consequences. When you help others, you might make new friends. Other people appreciate what you've done. They might reciprocate in your times of need. So I, what I often say is that helping others leads to a cascade of positive social consequences. It's sort of lots of good social things happen when you are generous and kind to others. OK, so this very simple study, we asked, again, students to do acts of kindness on a regular basis. Um, and they were asked to do five acts of kindness per week over, this also was a period of six weeks. Um, and here we had uh, three different conditions. Again, the control group, unfortunately, uh, just didn't do anything. Um, but then we had people either do their five acts of kindness all in one day. OK, so what's tomorrow's Friday? So tomorrow, go out and do five acts of kindness. Things that you don't normally do, right? Sort of over and above your normal sort of acts of kindness. Um, or you could spread them across the week, sort of next week, do five acts of kindness. These are, again, these are students. I'll show you some of the things that they performed in our study. My favorite one is told the professor, thank you for his hard work. Um, but actually, it's funny. Th this is, there are a lot of cultural differences here. I once gave, showed this list to an audience um, of people from different cultures. And they were like horrified of this list. And they said, so visiting grandma in the hospital is an act of kindness? You know, that you did, um, you know, that's just, that's your duty. I mean, that's something you're expected to do. So, so obviously, people define, quote, acts of kindness differently. But I think we all can identify, we can all define that to ourselves. And we can all try to do more acts of kindness. Well, my, own, my own thing, which I'm not very successful at, is um, being nicer to telemarketers. I just <laughs> cannot find in, in myself to be nice uh, on the phone. And, so I try to, you know, I, I really, I try to, to do that. So that's, that's, again, maybe I shouldn't call that an act of kindness. That should, that's just a, to be a thoughtful, sensitive person, we should do that. But, but anyway, we can all, we can all kind of uh, have our own subjective definition here. Um, OK, so um, these are changes in self-reported helping over the six-week study from before to after. And the control group, again, you see, they actually are helping less over the course of the study. Um, and again, I think it's because they, they have more work to do. They're getting busier. So they're, you know, they have less time for others. Um, uh, pe but people, even during this, this sort of, this is the, we're on the quarter system at UC Riverside. Even during this really, really busy quarter, people, the, the students who have been asked to uh, either um, do five acts of kindness on a single day or across the week, they are, um, uh, they are doing it more. 
and then here are the results for happiness. So again, interesting finding, we were successful in making people happier, but only in that condition where the students did all their acts of kindness in one single day. So again, like tomorrow, do go in, out and do five acts of kindness. Um, and I think it's because it was just more powerful, you know, just sort of five acts. They tended to be pretty small things, not, not all of them were big things. It's just very salient that you go out and you, it just makes you feel really good. Um, spreading the acts of kindness across the week might have just made them not really distinguishable from other things we tend to do. Our findings from this study and many other studies that we have done, other, other, uh, other researchers have done, attest to the important role of motivation, effort, commitment, and fit. So you need to choose the strategy wisely that you do. You need to be motivated, committed to it, put effort into it. It's just like any other goal in life.